Hey everyone, this is Tim from uh, SparrowMastery.com and I wanted to do the review of the Home Theater Direct Link 6 system that I've been promising. Um, I had a brief video about the unboxing of it and I know I had some people asking about the review. So this is going to be a quick um, kind of walking you through my install slash review. Um, I'm just going to you know give you some of the review as I go. Um, but I wanted to start here on Home Theater Direct's website um, to show you exactly what I purchased. So I purchased their um, Link 6 uh, V3 um, set. Um, they have a, this is their 6 zone model, they have a 12 zone model as well. Um, what I went with here is I went with the white keypads and I went, um, just like you can see in this picture, and then I went with the 120 watt per uh, zone um, amplifier. You know, this is essentially just going to be used for background, you know, music in 120 watts is playing for that. So um, you'll see um, the price here, $21.99. I actually ended up buying this on a sale they had a month ago um, for their 20th anniversary. They had like a 10% off sale, and I've been watching these for a while. They don't they don't have sales very often, especially site-wide, so I just took advantage of um, purchasing it at that point. I bought more than just the um, whole, the zone controller and the amplifier from them. Um, uh, I bought speakers too, but um, as you can see here, part of this set is also includes their uh, gateway, which allows you to control this from the app. And I'll I'll talk more about that in a minute here. But um, so what I also what I bought along with this are their uh, HDX six and a half inch speakers. I purchased uh, three sets of their um, ceiling speakers and one pair of the wall speakers. Um, I also purchased a pair of their outdoor speakers um, that I have not installed yet. Um, still pretty cold here in New England, so I'm waiting um, to install those. And I'm also waiting for uh, to install one pair of the uh, ceiling speakers because those will be going on our front porch. Um, so on top of the uh, speakers, I bought uh, impedance uh, matching volume control. And this is um, so I can control the volume uh, separately. I have one zone that's in that's for my kitchen slash living room. It's an open, open concept house. So um, I had speakers in my kitchen and my um, living room. I didn't want to um, have two separate zones there because you would never want to listen to two separate uh, sources at the same time, um, but I wanted to be able to control the volume separately. So I put a, um, I'll show you how I did that a little bit here, but I put a um, separate uh, volume control in for the uh, speakers in the living room. And the last thing is I bought some input panels. So each each of the keypads, just you can see here, they have the, the standard, uh, was it 3.5 millimeter or uh, 1 8 inch uh, uh, jacks in them, you know, standard headphone jack. So you can you could run a cable um, from the headphones on your um, phone or whatever uh, device you want uh, and plug it in here. But you have, you'd have to plug it in right at the keypad. So they make these input panels. Um, and so what I purchased is I purchased one of their standard input, pan input panels and that is in the master to um, as a TV as the source so that we can listen to the audio from a TV, um, you know, cause you can do music or if you wanted to, for some reason, listen to a, a, a sports, you know, like a baseball game or something or something like that. Um, and then, and then, and I bought one of the Bluetooth panels and I'll show you how that's hooked up, but you know, that it just essentially lets you pair, pair that with your phone. Um, my, my wife pairs it with her Kindle, um, and, uh, she streams uh, music from that a lot. So. I just wanted to start off by showing you what it is I actually purchased. So all said on this, I think I was like twenty seven hundred dollars uh, for the control for the zone controller, um, the three three uh, pairs of uh, ceiling speakers, the pair of wall speakers, the pair of outdoor speakers, the volume control, and those input panels. So. Um, you know, again, that was on sale. So I think I got around $300 off. Uh, and so that, you know, if you were to purchase that same thing, it'd probably be around $3,000. Once you do purchase that, um, what they do is they give you lifetime pricing on the, uh, speakers. So th this price you see here is a little higher than what you'd pay. Um, if you bought the speakers with the system, um, they give you a discount, um, to their uh, higher volume pricing, uh, for the speakers. Um, and then you get that for your, for a lifetime. So like if I wanted to buy another set of these, I think I think it's like 130 something dollars it costs, not 149. So 
Um, I just want to start off by showing you exactly what it is I purchased here, and then um, I'll jump into some uh, some of the pictures that I have um, of the install, um, and uh, then again I'll do like a review as I go here. So you probably already, if if you saw my other unboxing video, you've already seen this, but um, I wanted to show you how the stuff came. It, it came really boxed really well. Everything was double boxed. Um, you know, these are the three um, ceiling speakers here, and you can see each individual speaker came in its own box in really heavy, you know, dense styrofoam, and then those were inside of these other boxes. Um, so each each of these boxes has a pair of speakers in it. Um, you can see the uh, uh, grills there. Come, each of them come with two sets of grills. Um, they have the compression ones that fit inside the ring, and then they have these that you can put on. So that it's basically ringless. So you don't have you don't see the rim around the speaker. Um, so again, these are the ceiling speakers. Um, this is the, these are the pair of wall speakers. This is the pair of outdoor speakers. Here's the controller with the keypads, um, the input panels and the volume control, um, documentation. Uh, here's the amplifier and, uh, this stuff also came double boxed. Um, so, um, uh, I think it was the controller and all the keypads were in this box. And then, um, the amplifier was in a box that was inside this box. So everything was double boxed. The cardboard is the nice double walled, um, cardboard. So it was heavy duty cardboard. Everything arrived in, in perfect condition. So, um, the, the packing was really good. Here's a shot of the back of the controller, um, in the amplifier. Um, just real quick here. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, each keypad has its own source, um, but then you can also add these additional, you can also plug uh, things into these additional sources. So you have uh, the 7 through 11 here, and then this is an interesting one too. Um, this is a USB port for an MP3 player. So what I did is I just took a, a, an old USB stick I had and loaded it up with some music um, and plugged it in here, and, uh, and it's just background music. So you can just select source 12 from any of the keypads, any of the zones. And, uh, you know, if you have some nice relaxing background music you want that play and you can set it up to play in a loop. Um, so it will just keep, it'll just play continuously. Um, which is kind of nice if you just want quiet background music on without having to have, um, you know, any of the others, you know, like a, um, a phone paired with it or a TV or anything like that. So that was really cool. And then these other ones are just, again, these are those standard one eighth inch jacks. Um, uh, I'm sorry, th those are the IR, those are the IR outputs. Uh, the, the, these are the uh, input jacks here, the, the RCA jacks. Um, source seven is the only one that up here that has the one eighth inch. Um, these are, if you're trying, if you're using infrared, um, uh, output, you know, to any of these devices, I, I didn't use any of the infrared stuff. I don't have any infrared controllable devices plugged into mine, so I didn't need to use any of that. Um, Here's the RG45 connectors that actually, um, these are where your keypads plug into. So on the back of the keypads, which I think I'll, you'll see in a second, um, those just have standard RG45 jacks on them as well. So you essentially got to get like a patch cable between them. Um, but I, you know, I had pre-wired my house. So I was lucky enough to pre-wire my house. So um, I had run a Cat6 um, from um, the places where I knew I wanted to have keypads to a uh, central um, location um, in some in some Leviton um, structured media enclosures, which you'll see here in a second. Um, this is the RS-232 port. Um, so this is for the gateway that allows you to control it through the app. Um, so this is a, a simple plug, you know, serial cable goes from here into the gateway and then the gateway um, plugs into your home um, network. Um, this is an IR in, so if you had a, another infrared uh, input that you wanted to have in here that would blast out through all these other ports, um, you would plug that in there. A global IR, another out, IR infrared output. Um, then you have uh, 12 volt triggers. So you, you'll, there's a cable that comes with it that you'll want to run from the out um, to the in over here in the amplifier. And what that does is that just allows uh, the amplifier to only be on if there's a keypad on. Um, so it allows, you know, it allows the amplifier to shut off if nothing's turned on, which saves, saves power. Um, so here, what you, what you, you're going to get a bunch of patch cables with this too, RCA patch cables. So those will just go from left and right, um, each zone to each of these. So this would be like zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four. And so left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, so, you know, for all 12 channels on the amplifier, um, we'll cover your six zones here and you plug those into the variable, um, RCA jacks in the back here. Uh, and then just uh, standard power. 
there's a doorbell thing. I don't use that. I didn't use that. I don't have the doorbell thing, but I think they have, they sell a separate doorbell interface where you can actually, I think it not only detects somebody ringing the doorbell, but it also, I think allows you to talk to them through the intercom on, on the, in, on the system. Um, I don't, I don't have that. So, um, I didn't use any of that. Um, so yeah, so here's a keypad. Um, so you, when you get them, they have the, you know, the LCDs uh, uh, covered um, with this protective cover. Um, yeah, here's where you select your sources, so what source input you want to listen to on this zone. There's a do not disturb button because um, there's actually an intercom on the thing where you can actually talk between zones. And that, like I mentioned, I think even you know, through the doorbell, um, which I don't have. But um, uh, so here's where you would select a zone you wanted to talk to in the intercom. Um, here's your volume controls, um, power. Um, infrared, here's the input that I was mentioning. Um, uh, um, if you wanted to use a, a, a standard, you know, a 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch uh, uh, cable to feed an input into the into this keypad, that's where you would do that. Um, here's the back of the keypad. So as I mentioned, um, on the back of the controller, there's just the RJ45 plugs and here. This is where you'd plug um, the other end of that in. Um, and then, and then this is where you can plug an input source in at least one of their digital ones. So like this is, you'll see later, this is where I, pl I plugged my um, Bluetooth, um, input panel just into, um, into the back of the keypad. Um, actually let me back up here a second. This is where you plug the analog. There's a little cable that comes with like my standard input jack came with a little cable that plugs in there. Um, so that's where the, uh, analog ones plug in. Here's the impedance um, matching volume control, as I mentioned, you'll, it, you'll see later here. Um, I, the, the living room and kitchen um, are open concepts, so I just wanted to be able to uh, control the volume separately. And this is just standard, um, you know, plus minus left, right input, and then out to the speakers. Here's the wire, here's the rack in my basement. Uh, so I built, I'm building a closet around it. Um, you can, as you can see, I'm still finishing off my basement. I haven't done that yet. But um, this is rack actually is, um, already has my, um, uh, security system in it, my routers there, I have a network switch here, um, this is a monitor for the um, security. But this is, you'll see later, this is where I installed my um, whole house audio um, system. This is also gonna be, uh, my media server is gonna go in here for my home theater. Um, I didn't wanna have a you know large uh, like storage a server with a bunch of storage running on it and fans in my home theater. So I'm actually gonna have this down here and I have another rack up, I'm in my home theater right now. I, I in my home theater here with my um, home theater equipment in it, and there'll just be a home theater PC up here that will connect to the media server to play all of my uh, movies. This is the side of the closet. Um, so, you know, the other part's going to have doors, double doors on it, and I'll always be closed, and this will be all drywalled, and so you'll just have this little um, section on the side that's open where you can actually interface with the servers and look in the monitor and anything. So this will all be covered, you know, all this will all be blanked off except for the stuff that, um, you know, the actual servers and everything. Um, the, you know, it's going to be storage in here, um, some additional stuff in here that, I mean, you'll see in a minute where the home theater stuff gets installed in here. As I mentioned, I was able to pre-wire my house, so... I wired my own house, um, both electrical and low voltage. So I had, um, I, I knew where I was going to run my keypad. So I ran cat six, um, to each of those locations. And I also ran the speaker wire through those locations. Um, just in case later on, I wanted to put another volume controller or something in, I just looped a little speaker wire at each of these locations just for future proofing in case I ever wanted to change something. This is the, uh, um, the box I put in for the um, impedance matching matching volume control um, for the living room. So this is just the speaker wire that goes to the living room speakers, and you'll see later how that's hooked up. And this is the uh, Leviton Media enclosures I was mentioning. So I have 48 ports going, 48 connections going out to various locations throughout my house, um, and then uh, and then this these four over here, you can see they're labeled rack. Um, those go to the rack um, that you just saw. Um, so then I can just cross connect um, with, with these little short patch cables, anything I need to get from one of the um, locations throughout the house and into the rack. And so this is where I just ran these little short patch cables from the connections that fed to the keypads to the rack. And then on the rack, I just ran another patch cable from, from the patch panel um, into the back of the controller. Um, then on this other, meta, the other um, media panel, which I think these are the Leviton 40, 42 inch panels. Um, 
uh, you know, this is the speaker. This one has the speaker wire and the RG6 cables in it. Um, the RG6 are for my mostly for my security um, cameras. And then this is the uh, speaker cable coming from the speakers um, into these Leviton speaker modules. And then you, know, you can see the um, other, and then the speaker wire comes out of there and then comes down into here into this trough, which feeds over to the um, rack that you just saw. And I'll show you in a second how that um, connects in there. So uh, back to the keypads. Um, uh, so these are just um, the wire I was able to just you just terminate them with the RJ45 plugs, like I mentioned, um, because those Leviton racks, uh, those modules use the A wiring pattern. So I just put the plugs on there in the A wire in the A pattern, um, and then in this fediment, just plugged them into the back of the keypads. And then this is just a standard patch cable going between the keypad and and this is the Bluetooth um, input panel that I just jammed into the um, uh, volume look uh, box just for uh, testing. So. That was just all temporary. Here's the front of the, um, here's the zone controller and then here's the amplifier. So the amplifier, here's the 12 channels that you saw in the back um, with the volume, you know, you can adjust the volume independently on each of those channels. Then you notice in here, the um, light's blue, that's because there's a keypad that's on. So if this keep, zone four keypad wasn't on, um, this would actually be amber showing that the amp was in standby. Um, and then there's lights over here also for the input sources. So any of the input sources that it's actually detecting audio on, it will light up. It'll light up those um, those LEDs. That's just the same picture, I guess. So here's a hole that I had. Um, so I, again, I had I knew this was happening. I knew I was putting one of these in when we built our house a few years ago. So I actually I had put cardboard up um, with the correct hole size for the speakers I wanted to put in. Um, and my builder thought he was doing me a favor um, by uh, taking the cardboard out and putting a uh, three quarter inch uh, subflooring in instead, which would have been fine, um, except for Home Theater Direct changed their speakers from when they went from their HD to their HDX model. The cutout size went from seven and three quarters to eight inch, which if this plywood hadn't, if this uh, subflooring hadn't been put in here, I would have easily just been able to take a drywall saw and cut this out by a quarter of an inch. But um, because of this uh, subflooring, I actually had to take a router and like get up in there and route this out, um, and then route the drywall out, and then I used a jigsaw to cut the rest out, which was a real <laughs> made a real mess and kind of a pain. So you know, by far the hardest part's going to be getting your wires to all these locations. So you know, again, I was lucky enough to be able to pre-wire my house. Um, but if, if you don't have that luxury, you're going to have to snake the wires, you know, the speaker wire to the speaker locations and the um, cat, the cat um, six cable to the keypad locations, um, you know, and then back to wherever you put your controller and amplifier. So that's going to mean you probably mean like drilling up from your basement or drilling down into the walls from your attic. Um, so just be aware if you're not comfortable doing that stuff, you're probably you're likely to have to hire an electrician to do it. So here's the. Um, uh, speakers installed in the kitchen and kind of shows you the open concept I was talking about. Um, so there's another set of speakers over here in the living room that you can't see and which obviously you wouldn't want to be playing two separate zones here. It'd be a um, kind of chaotic. <laughs> um, so uh, there, so this is just, this is the volume control here. Um, uh, so I, I can control those separately. And then you can see here's, these are the, you know, speakers installed. And again, I mentioned, I, I'm just using the compressed, uh, compression uh, grills. Um, if you'd use the other ones, like you wouldn't see this little white ring around it, you'd see just the grill. So here's the, um, here's the everything installed. So here's the uh, volume control I mentioned uh, for the living room. Here's the keypad for the kitchen slash the living room. And then here's that Bluetooth uh, input panel. And then these are some, uh, here's my smart home switches for, uh, for all my audio controls. I'm sorry, lighting control. Um, so here's a close up of the keypad and the Bluetooth um, input panel. And so one of the, you know, I mentioned the um, the app thing with the code. So here's, this is another slight um, complaint I had, not really complaint, but um, issue, I guess um, I wanted to mention, and that is the plates. So these plates on the keypads, they're held on with just magnets which makes it real easy to put them on, but they also come off real easy. Um, like if you were walking by and bumped it, it'd likely fall off or like when you're dusting or something. So you just gotta be careful um, that they don't stay on all that great, um, um, which again, makes them easy to put on, but they also come off easy. And then the other thing is um, the difference in the plates. So 
you'll notice like the play around the um, keypad matches really well with um, you see back here matches really well with the um, plates around my switches and even the plate around the volume control but for some reason they um, made these input panels with these like really squared off and bulky um, plates and so you know these are like the input panels are likely going to be near the keypads um, since you have to wire them into them um, and it's just it's kind of strange that they um, you know that the plates don't match um, I would have preferred to have plates that looked the same as the ones on the keypads again minor but just something to point out um, and so I mentioned to all the speaker wire that come into the enclosures and um, from the enclosures I then ran the speaker wire up here into these banana jack uh, keystones. Um, the reason I did that is because um, it's trying to get wire and you, you can see the amplifier right here trying to get the wire directly into the amplifier under these screw down you know slash banana connectors is, is a pain in the butt. Um, and it's this it's not necessarily just a home theater direct thing that I find that with any um you know um, receiver I've ever I've ever used that trying to get the wires neatly underneath these screw down terminals without you know getting any strands cross connecting ac crossing across the um, polarity or across channels or something it's just a big pain so I decided to um buy these keystone banana keystones and these just have like the nice screw down terminals in the back so you just screw the you put the wire in there's like little screws that tight up against it and just makes such such a neater job so i was able to just do nice neat wiring up through here and it's all tied in it's all wire tied neatly behind these and you know this is just like uh, channel one channel two channel three or zone one zone two zone three zone four and you know so there's 12 wires for the six zones so um you know i just bought these tw 12 port because it was cheaper than the 24 i think um uh patch panels um they're just keystone patch panels and then these keystone plugs to plug uh, banana jacks to plug into them so you'll see here in a minute the cables i created to go between them so here here are the leviton panels again with the covers closed um you, know, you can see this is the trough that runs you know all the wiring comes down through these pipes into these into this trough and this trough has a couple of large holes here on the on the back side that you can't see that go through the wall um, and there's small pipes that fit through that go into into where that rack is so like all the wiring can be you know everything's closed and you don't see any of the wiring um, so it's a nice neat neat look um, this is just a look at the speakers in the dining room not really much different than the ones that are in the kitchen it's just the, the same six and a half inch uh, speakers uh, this is just an ad, another keypad that's gonna that's gonna run the outdoor speakers once I get those installed that are in our backyard um, there's a of a it's kind of a grainy picture but um and that's a that's actually a insteon um eight um button keypad there um that um i used to control my back the lights outside so here's the master um uh these this is the one place i use the wall speakers and so these i hadn't cut the holes in ahead of time what i did with these i just had the speaker wire like in the wall cavity and so here's a little tip is if you are even if you're not doing your own rough wiring, if you have the if 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 you are building a house or you are doing renovations, take pictures of your rough wiring, um, and it's it's a great resource to have one later on when you're trying to cut this stuff in to make sure you're you know like in the right wall cavity, um, or uh, uh, making sure you're not cutting anywhere where there potentially are um, you know uh, line voltage wires as well. So it's you know I I I when we built our house I took a whole bunch of pictures of all of the wiring I did just so that later on I could reference it um, and know exactly where to cut stuff in. So that's just a little tip. And you can see here is the keypad for the master. And this is just a couple more pictures of that. Here's the rack in in the in the basement. It's just this is just a close up. I guess I took of the this is the patch panel I was mentioning. Um, so there's the wiring runs from this patch panel. Um, back to those Leviton um, network modules that you saw in the enclosure. Um, and then so from here, I would, you know, so basically the wire would run from the keypad to those Leviton modules. I would cross wire from the Leviton modules into this patch panel. And then from the patch panel, these cables go directly down into the keypads. And then you can see here's my switch. Um, so, you know, some of these uh, go directly. Some of these go into the switch for other other things throughout the house. Here's the uh, banana um, cables I mentioned. So I, I made my own banana cables. I just, again, these are, 
and I'll have links to all this stuff um, in, for my blog site. I have links to a lot of all this stuff that I purchased that was extra that wasn't part of the home theater direct stuff. But these are the banana um, uh, plugs that I bought. Um, and then this is just mono price. Uh, this is actually 12 gauge wire. The wire that ran to the speaker locations is 14. I'd recommend running 14.4 if, if you can if you can afford it um, to each of the speaker locations. It just gives you, you know, especially if you're running at long distance, it gives you some extra um, conductors that you can pair up if you need to for long distances or if you want to for some reason body amp stuff or anything, you can do that. Um, uh, but then th these are 12, it's just, this is just mono price 12 gauge wire. I just pulled the jacket off from and then made my own. Um, cables I think you see here. yeah so here's the amp side so here's those things going in and see how much easier that is to just plug those in than it is to like try and get the wires up in there and screwed it down underneath those terminals you can also see that there's all the RCA patch cables that go from the variable outputs into the, all these individual inputs this is the documentation that came with it it was a folder um, again, I was pretty impressed with all the documentation, except for the fact that it was missing the documentation for the, the, their gateway. Um, you know, I had to, um, like go online and find information about that and to find that, oh, the app, you know, why the app was locked and that I had, I was actually supposed to get a code to get into the, you know, to unlock it. Um, but I didn't get that. Um, so I actually, and, you know, unfortunately I was ready for it on a weekend. And so I had to. Um, you know, email them and wait until I think I didn't, I don't think I got anything until Wednesday because I think the person that I was communicating with ended up being on vacation. So I waited like a several, several days before I could even get into the app. And the app is where you actually like put all the name, you know, do all the naming and stuff for the, for the keypad. So, um, you know, it, everything works. It's just the keypads will just say like, you know, zone one, zone two, zone three, instead of um, you being able to name them once you get in the app. And so everything's named now that I got the app working, but just something to be aware of. Make sure you get that code when you order it so that, um, you know, you can get into the app as soon as you want. Um, you know, I, I would say support wise, I was really, I've been, I've been pretty, pretty impressed. Um, I think there was like three times I contacted them. One of them was on the beginning of the order um, because it was, as I mentioned, a sale, and um, I I was I got an email right when I purchased and said that I was supposed to get an, a confirmation of shipping within 24 hours, and it was like a couple of days later I hadn't heard anything, so I emailed them, and um, it was pretty quick. Somebody got back to me and just said that you know they kind of got overwhelmed with the sales from their sale, which is I guess good for them, um, um, and that they were a little their warehouse is a little behind, so. Um, but I, I did end up getting the shipping confirmation that, that day. So, um, it was just a, it, I had to wait like a few days before I got the shipping confirmation. The second time I contacted them was about the volume control for the, um, living room speakers. I just wanted to verify, I just wanted to double check and make sure the, um, amp was four ohm stable because I was putting two eight ohm speakers in parallel, um, uh, you know, just I wanted to verify the settings I was supposed to use on the uh, impedance matching controller. Um, but since the the amp was four ohm stable, I was able to just leave the switch on one on the um, <clears throat> on the volume control and just let the amp see four ohms because it could handle it. And then the third the third time I contacted them was as I mentioned for the code for the um, for the app. But you know, overall, I was I'm really happy with uh, I was really happy with the support for that. So that's all I have for pictures. Um, so just review wise, a few more things, the speakers, um, I first, at first thought they were kind of tinny. Um, but the more I listened to them, the more I liked them and, um, you know, for the price, you really can't beat it. Um, I, you know, I have some pretty decent speakers in my home theater here and, um, you know, I, these, these things sound, they sound really good. They sound really good for the price. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can really beat it for the price. Um, they do have plus three and minus three dB settings on them for both the bass and treble. And so I did bump up the bass a little bit on them, um, just to give it a little more low end. I did put, um, insulation in the holes before I put the speakers in. So uh, that's something they recommend you do fills in some of that void around it. So you don't have a big, um, basically bass. Uh, uh, cannon um, up in your ceiling and so I did do that um, 
But, you know, as far as the app and the features in the app, now that I've had a chance to use it, it, it I, I really like it. It's pretty powerful. Let you control every zone. You can, avoid, you know, adjust treble, bass in every zone. You can set up scenes. You can, again, rename everything. You can block certain sources from certain zones if you want your kids, you know, if you have something in your kid's room and you don't want them having access to certain sources, you can block that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. It's not, you know, so it's, it's basic stuff, but it, you know, you can stream from it. Um, but you know, I'm I mean, overall, I'm pretty impressed. I'm definitely, I definitely would recommend this system to anybody, um, who's looking for a, you know, wired whole house audio system. It's uh, I don't think for a price you can beat it. Um, with, there's not much out there that beats it. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of wireless stuff with Sonos and everything, but, um, I just love the features of the wired one and the, you know, nice the better quality speakers and stuff you can get um to to mount and and just i just like having the everything clean mounted in the ceiling or in the walls so um if you have any specific questions on it um you know put them down in the comments and i'll do my best to uh um, answer them um you know i i I'm, i may do something additional on this about the app once i've had a chance to play around with the app some more and maybe on the outdoor speakers once i've done those but but again, I would, I, you know, I definitely would highly recommend it. I would highly recommend this, the system. And uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, please, you know, remember to subscribe. Um, give give a thumbs up for the video if, if this is helpful. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this type of stuff. I've been doing a lot on the entertainment side, but I, I really am going to be doing more home automation stuff. And, um, and we're going to be getting into solar here pretty soon because it's starting to get to be, uh, you know, getting close to spring here. And I already have, I think, two solar uh, installs lined up. And so I'll be documenting those and, and posting uh, content about those, too. So if you're interested in any of that, um, you know, again, please subscribe and uh, and uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, and I guess that's it. So I will talk to you later. Thanks.